the Battle of Lechfeld was a decisive victory for Otto the Great, King of East Francia, over the Hungarians led by Bulchu and Lehel. This is often seen as the defining event in stopping Hungarian incursions into Western Europe. Located south of Augsburg, Lechfeld is a floodplain along the Lech River. The battle appears as the second battle of Augsburg in Hungarian historiography. The first battle of Augsburg took place in 910, ending in victory for the Hungarians. The Hungarians are part of the Finno-Ugric populations that occupied the steppes east of the Ural Mountains more than 2000 years ago. These lands were ideal for animal husbandry, but also for agriculture. Around 550, the Hungarians were forced to move west of the Ural Mountains to the source of the Don River. Archaeological research has shown that a population arrived in this area whose funeral rite is very similar to that of the Hungarians who came to the Pannonian Basin a few centuries later. Horse bones and gold or silver foil were placed in the graves and on the eyes of the deceased. Such cemeteries continue to exist until the 12th and the 13th centuries. The monk Julianus, sent by the future king Bela IV to find the remaining Hungarians in these lands, managed to find them in 1235, but after the great Mongol invasion, nothing was known about them. The Hungarians did not stay long in this land either, after they took part in a revolt against the Chazar Empire, which at that time ruled the steppes between the Black Sea and the Aral Lake. Around 850, they reached the territory between the Prut and the Dnieper, a land they called Etelkos. From this moment, the Hungarians began their expeditions of prey to Central Europe. From the year 862, dating the prayer, Lord, save us from the Arabs of the Hungarians. The historical sources that reported that Hungarian incursions were not few in number. The most important accounts are those made by two Byzantine emperors, Leo VI the philosopher and Constantine Porphyrogenitus, who tell us about the history of the Hungarians before their arrival in Pannonia and talk about their political and social organization their habits, with all the features, all the details, all the precision common to the Byzantines, always eager to know the tribes that had moved near their borders. Western writers, however, have much less clear notions, and in their writings, the Hungarians cannot be distinguished from other barbarians who, like those in Pannonia, unleash terror and death in Western countries. Western medieval chroniclers called them Huns, the Hungarians, who in fact had a certain ethnic affinity with Attila's Huns, confiscated the legends that were still circulating, presenting themselves as the descendants of him. The economic policy of the Hungarians involved the plundering of neighboring territories and the collection of tribute from their neighbors. These procedures have long maintained the nomadic warrior aristocracy of the Hungarians, like the Vikings, they enjoyed great mobility, but unlike them, they fought without dismounting and made excessive use of arrows, which made them dangerous, but not for well-armed opponents. They were not invincible, they could be defeated if they kept fighting. Like the Vikings, they had complex relationships with the people in the areas they invaded. They often fought as mercenaries without neglecting trade. The Hungarians did not stay in Etelkos for long. In 893, the Arabs attacked the people of the Aral Lake area, causing them to move to their neighbors and set them in motion. Thus, one of the traditional steppe enemies of the Hungarians, the Pechenegs, became their eastern neighbors. Meanwhile, Tsar Simeon I invaded the Byzantine territories and defeated the numerically reduced troops who tried to cope with the attack. As a result, the Byzantines tried to ally with the Hungarians to attack the Bulgarians. The Byzantines signed a treaty with the Hungarian leader Arpad and the Byzantine ships transferred the Hungarian warriors 
to several positions along the lower course of the Danube. The Hungarians attacked Bulgaria and forced Simeon to take refuge in Silistra, after which they plundered Preslav. With the attack of the Hungarians in the north, the Byzantines invaded southern Bulgaria. In this situation, Tsar Simeon decided to demand an end to the fighting, but he also sent ambassadors to the Pashenegs to incite them against the Hungarians. The Pashenegs attacked the Hungarians, forcing the Hungarian armies to withdraw from Bulgaria, after which they attacked them in the southern Bug region. The Pashenegs destroyed the Hungarian settlements. The survivors of this combined attack, led by Arpad, the last surviving of their leaders, decided to leave the Pontic steppe area and cross the Carpathians in search of a new homeland. Regarding the arrival of the Hungarians in Pannonia, Hungarian historiography supports two different currents. According to the first of these, their arrival took place in 895, both by the force of arms and by negotiations. As a first step, the main army arrived in the Carpathian Basin through the Veretsky Pass, and then most of the population followed this army under the protection of a rear guard. The second theory is that the Hungarians were divided into two armies, one being defeated by the Bulgarians and the other being destroyed by the Pashenegs. The remains of the Hungarians defeated by the Pashenegs took refuge in Transylvania, while the other army led by Arpad defeated the Moravians. The two armies met again, probably in Pannonia. The third theory is the one supported by the Romanian historiography, considering that the arrival of the Hungarians took place from the north, bypassing Transylvania, an intensely populated area, not in 895, but a year later. Thus, based mainly on the description of Anonymous, the Hungarian tribes entered Pannonia through the Ukrainian Carpathians, most likely through the Veresky Pass, Transylvania being later occupied from the west. At first, the Hungarians were seen by the Germans as the perfect weapon against the Moravians. In 894, a civil war broke out in Moravia, with the Bavarians using the Hungarians to defend their interests in the early years. It was not until Pannonia was completely devastated and the Moravian Empire disappeared, that the Germans realized their mistake, but they continued to believe that they would be able to withstand the Hungarian attacks. What happened in the next 10 years proved that they were wrong. In 899, the Hungarians defeated Berengar's army at the Battle of the Brenta River and invaded northern Italy. They looted the countryside around the cities of Treviso, Vicenza, Verona, Brescia, Bergamo and Milan. In 902, they waged a campaign against North Moravia, defeating them, and their state was completely annihilated. Almost every year after the year 900, they carried out raids against the Catholic West and the Byzantine East. In 905, the Hungarians and King Berengar formed a friendship and for 15 years, Hungarian troops did not enter Italy. The Hungarians defeated no less than three large armies of the East Franks between 907 and 910 in rapid and devastating raids. In 907, they stopped the Bavarian invasion near Bratislava, destroying their army and successfully defending Hungary from future attacks. On this occasion, the Bishop of Salzburg and a large part of the nobility were killed. Since then, Moravia, Germany, France and Italy have remained open for Hungarian raids. On the 3rd of August 908, the Hungarians won the Battle of Eisenach. Burchard, Duke of Thuringia and Rudolf I, the Bishop of Würzburg, were killed. In 910, the Hungarians defeated Louis the Child's army in the First Battle of Lechfeld. After the first German defeats, they changed their tactics, paying tribute to the Hungarians and attacking them only when conditions were extremely favorable. In 913, an allied army of Swabians and Bavarians defeated them but were unable to put an end to the robberies of the following years. 
smaller Hungarian cavalry units invaded Bremen in 915. In 919, after the death of Conrad I of Germany, the Hungarians attacked Saxony, Lorraine and West Francia. In 921, they defeated King Berenger's enemies in Verona and reached Apulia in 922. Between 917 and 925, the Hungarians attacked Basel, Alsace, Burgundy, Provence and the Pyrenees. In 926, they devastated Swabia and Alsace, passed through the present-day Luxembourg and reached the Atlantic Ocean. In 927, Peter, the brother of Pope John X, asked the Hungarians to rule Italy. They marched on Rome and imposed a huge tribute on Tuscany and the city of Taranto. In 933, a major Hungarian army arrived in Saxony, but was defeated by Henry I at Merseburg. The attacks continued against Upper Burgundy in 935 and against Saxony in 936. In 937, they reached the western border in France at Reims, Lorraine, Swabia, Franconia, the Duchy of Burgundy, and in Italy as far as the Otranto Strait in the south. They attacked Bulgaria and the Byzantine Empire, reaching the walls of Constantinople. The Byzantines paid them a tax for 15 years. In 938, the Hungarians repeatedly attacked Saxony and in 940, they devastated the region of Rome. In 942, Hungarian raids took place on Spain, especially in Catalonia. In 947, they led a raid in Italy to Apulia, and King Berenger II of Italy had to buy peace by paying a large sum of money for himself and his successors. However, the Hungarians gradually ceased to pose a serious threat to Western Europe, and their raids became less frequent. Saxony was not invaded after the defeat of the Hungarians in 938, while the Bavarians not only defeated the Hungarians in 943 and 948, successfully defending their own territory, but in 950 attacked the Hungarian territory, imposing on them to pay the tribute to them. The invasion of 954 to 955 would be the last Hungarian invasion of Western Europe. In 953, Ludolf, Duke of Swabia, supported by Saxon nobles and others, including Conrad the Red of Lorraine, organized a revolt against his father Otto. The war spread throughout Germany, and Ludolf initially had some advantages over his father. However, the situation suddenly changed when the Hungarians entered Bavaria in 954. The rebels were accused of inviting the Hungarians and the robberies committed by them undermined the prestige of the revolt. Conrad, Duke of Lorraine, surrendered in 954, followed by Ludolf in 955. Conrad retained the title of Duke and numerous vassals but lost his duchy. Ludolf lost both his duchy of Swabia and his vassals. In April 955, the city of Regensburg, the last stronghold of Otto's opponents, was conquered and the rebellion ended. Shortly afterwards, the fighting against the Hungarians began. The Hungarians started the invasion in 954, determined to avenge the defeats of recent years. The attack on Otto's allies in Bavaria, Swabia and Franconia began in February. On the 1st of March, they crossed the Rhine and encamped at Worms, the capital of their ally Conrad, Duke of Lorraine. Then, on the 19th of March, they marched westward, attacking the domains of the enemy dukes Bruno the Great, Archbishop of Cologne and Count Raginarius, then crossing the Moselle and Maas rivers. They reached Maastricht and crossed the Hesse Bay between Liège and Namur, burning the monastery of St. Lando in Winterschofen and the collegiate church of St. Albain in Namur. When they arrived, the monks of St. Feuline de Fosses and St. Hubert fled. Passing through Jean Blou, they would have allowed a holy monk, Guibert, to convert some of them. 
Then they destroyed the Church of Saint Vandru in Mons and the Soignier Monastery. In the north, they invaded and deserted the Abbey of Saint Gudul in Morsel. Then, part of the invaders returned, taking the road they had come. They devastated the abbeys of Saint Martin of Tournai and Hasnan, and then attacked the city of Cambrai. During the siege of Cambrai, a relative of Bulchu was killed and the city's defenders refused to return the body to the Hungarians. In order to take revenge, they killed all the prisoners and set fire to the monastery of saint Geri near Cambrai. After the 6th of April, the Hungarians crossed the border into France, looting the surroundings of Laon, Reims, Chalon, Metz and Gors. After that, they returned through Burgundy and northern Italy. In mid-July 1955, a new Hungarian army, led by Bulchu and Lehel, entered Germany, devastating Bavaria and Swabia. Upon hearing the news that the Hungarians had invaded Germany again, Otto ordered his troops to focus on the Danube near Neuburg and Ingolstadt. He did this in order to march on the Hungarian communications line and catch them in the back as they raided northeast of Augsburg. Therefore, a central point of concentration was established to organize its armies. Strategically, this was the best location for Otto to concentrate his forces before giving the final blow to the Hungarians. The Germans already knew the Hungarians well and they had nothing to surprise them with. The Germans had a series of fortifications that the Hungarians could not conquer so they had to content themselves with plundering the unprotected surroundings. The Germans knew that Hungarians should not be attacked when they cross the border, because at that point they are rested, fast, careful, and in addition they were fighting in groups. The best time they could be attacked is when they are living, loaded with prey and prisoners, fewer in number than on arrival, tired and less disciplined. Horsemen could easily be defeated if the fighting took place in narrow valleys or in swampy places. The Hungarians could easily be demoralized if they lost their leaders and Otto knew how to take advantage of this. Attempts to reconstitute the Battle of Legfeld focused on two main sources. The first of these is written by Gerhard, a resident of Augsburg later became the administrator of the cathedral around 985. He wrote Vita Sancti Waldrici, at the same time, a biography of Bishop Ulrich, where a chapter is dedicated to the battle. Although he did not personally witness the events of August 955, Gerhard certainly knew several of the city's inhabitants who attended. The other source, Res Gestae Saxonice Sive Analium Libri Tres, written by the Saxon monk Widukind of Corway, is disputed by some historians. He did not witness the battle and the work was completed in 976. From the Hungarians, there is only one source that provides details about the battle, Gesta Ungarorum, which was written after 1200. In early August 955, Hungarian forces reached the Iller River besieging the city of Augsburg. The city was defended by Bishop Ulrich. Most likely, the fierce battle took place on the 8th of August at the eastern gate of the city, which the Hungarians tried to storm in large numbers. The bishop's men bravely defended themselves and killed the leader of the attackers, forcing the Hungarians to retreat. The next day, the Hungarians launched a large-scale attack. At the end of the day, the siege was repulsed and the Hungarians prepared for the next day's battle. Meanwhile, the German army, consisting of three Bavarian contingents, the Frankish contingent of Duke Conrad, the Royal Unit, two contingents from Swabia and one from Bohemia, was approaching Augsburg. The Bavarians were placed at the head of the column because they knew the land best. Otto set up camp on the territory of Augsburg, joining the forces of Henry I, Duke of Bavaria, who was seriously ill, and Duke Conrad with a large number of knights from the Franconia region. 
The arrival of Conrad, the former Duke of Lorraine, and Otto's son-in-law was particularly encouraging because from a former ally of the Hungarians, he passed under Otto's command. But later, he lost his life in the ensuing battle. A legion of Swabians was commanded by Burchard III, Duke of Swabia, and also under the command of Otto fought Boleslav of Bohemia. About 3000 Saxons were commanded by Otto himself. The Hungarians crossed the river and immediately attacked the Bohemians, then the Swabian legions, but retreated after a short battle. Otto ordered Conrad to retrieve the supplies, which he did. Despite the rain of arrows of the Hungarians, Otto's army managed to cause great damage to their line. The Germans were able to fight hand-to-hand -hand with the Hungarians. Bulchu simulated a retreat with some of his forces trying to lure Otto's men into pursuit, but with no result. The German line was maintained and the Hungarians were repulsed. At the end of the day, both camps suffered heavy losses. Most of the Hungarian horsemen managed to escape, while the German knights, wearing heavier armor, were too tired from the summer heat to chase them. King Otto spent the night after the battle in Augsburg. He gave the precise order that all the bridges and forts of the river Lech to be guarded, so that all the Hungarians, and especially their rulers, to be captured. Captains Bulchu and Lehel were captured, taken to Regensburg and hanged. Although King Otto could demand a ransom for the Hungarian leaders, he thought it would be more effective to execute their leaders to bring down their morale. Left without leaders, the Hungarian army disintegrated, with many captured and killed, and only a few escaping. The Battle of Lechfeld put an end to the Hungarian invasions of Western Europe. In the East, the invasions lasted until 970. After losing 5,000 fighters, along with their captains, and threatened by Otto with an invasion, the Hungarians began to settle and laid the foundations of medieval Hungary. After the victory, Otto consolidated his power, being crowned in 962 Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire.